Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are pleased to welcome Jordan Speed, our 2015 Masters Champion, to the interview room. Jordan, this is your 10th appearance here. You've had six top five finishes. What is it about Augusta National that brings out the best in you? Well, it was my favorite tournament growing up. I fell in love with it um, from kind of the mid 2000s, that crazy run of Tiger and Phil and, and whatnot that got me into the game. So um, it was the most visible tournament and obviously the crazy shots that were hit, the history of, of the event and the golf course itself. And then since I've been here, it just seems to, um, seems to grow on me more and more. Um, all of those factors. So it's a special week from, you know, tonight through um, the par three tomorrow now, having two kids and having them involved in that. And then the tournament itself, it's just a unique week. And um, I love it. I love contending here more than I do just about anywhere else. And um, I look forward to trying to do so this year. With that, we're going to open it up to questions. Chris. When you won, you were 21 years old. You're now 30 uh, with two children, like you mentioned. Um, how much has the changing family dynamic affected you, and, and how different is your practice and your tournament weeks now versus what they were when you were 21? Uh, honestly, not a lot different. I think, in general, I just get a little more tired because I'm 30 and not 21, which will only, from what I hear, become uh, – I don't think you go backwards on that. So. Uh, I think time management I may be a little bit better at, but I also feel like I have to be better at. Um, but other than that, not much has changed. I'm still working just as hard. I just may work to be done at 3.30 instead of 5, so I may go a little bit earlier in the day and stuff like that um, when I'm home uh, to make sure that I'm home for when I can have all afternoon with the kids. So, uh, yeah, it's more just shifting around when you're doing stuff. But in general, I don't feel like it's jeopardized my work, I care about my family and my work. And then after that, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of other stuff going on, but, um, you know, I've tried to prioritize those and hope to keep it that way. Jordan, yeah. Sander was in here yesterday and was talking about all the nuances around the greens. And he said, for example, you can hit your spot on a dime, but if it's not at the right speed, it's gone. Can you talk about the creativity, imagination? and why that's another factor why you excel here? Yes, I think, you know, there's, especially around the greens, it, spin is a, is a massive factor, but it's also the height that it comes in at because sometimes you can have as much spin as you want on the ball, but because of the firmness of these greens, that first hop may go far enough to where it's going down a hill, even though you've hit a shot where, say, next week it would end up four feet versus a little higher one might be one foot short. The dispersion is so much wider here. Um, so you have to have the right height and spin combination. Some shots, the spin doesn't matter. They have to come in landing softly. And some shots, you'd rather have them low and, and skiddy um, to be able to, um, to, to play at up ridges and not have to land it into slopes and stuff. So there's a lot of imagination, but um, it, I, I don't know of a place that requires more precision on a combination of height and spin, um, whether it's in a bunker or out of the fairway um, than you see here, especially when you get a little bit out of position on some of these holes. So that's why they always say keep it below the hole out here because you normally have a few more options where if you, if you are a touch off, um, you, still, you still have a good look at par. But when you're above the hole or, or pin high in a missed green, you know, that precision, just, you just have to be um, significantly better than most weeks. Doug? When you look at the, what the year has done for you so far in terms of the Riviera, in terms of missing a, a couple of cuts when you're trying to figure out how that happened. Do you at all feel snake bit, and is there anything calming uh, about getting here? I think uh, it was more last week was calming than it was than it is even just being here. Now, I mean, I've come in here after a missed cut and had a chance to win, and I've come in here after losing in a playoff and winning. So I, I don't really think that. Um, so in a way, I guess maybe that is a, a confidence more than a calming where. I don't really go off of necessarily um, what's just happened, but um, in general, I have a really good gauge on where my game's at. And I feel like my game has been better than the results that I've had, which is um, they typically line up. 
over a course of an extended period of time. I've just had some really outlier weeks, um, and I thought last week was more of the settling down, like, okay, you know, the couple of mistakes I made were, um, were just random ones that I don't normally make, you know, chipping. Um, otherwise, I would have been having a chance for third, um, unlike those other two guys. But um, in general, would have been a you know a, a really solid week off of a couple weird weird things that went down. So um, I, a calming I think, effect before or after you hit it on the roof. You know that that was obviously um, I was probably calmer than you would have been in that situation. <laughs> but uh, you know I had better moments last week than just that one. Yeah. Um, but you know I could have saved a shot if I didn't three putt. But. Um, Sure enough, I could have just tried to punch it out left-handed and made the same score. <laughs> Kelly? You were mentioning the nuance that it takes to play here, but when you think about sustaining success here over time, obviously you had 2015. Are there things that you think back from that year that you try to maybe replicate or, or do more of when you're here in now? Yeah, make that many putts. It's that <laughs> simple. Um, I've, hit it, I've hit it better um, a lot of years than I did that year. Uh, and uh, you know, you just I just was rolling them, um, and so you you try to work a lot on you, know, you have to hit some putts softer than you hit anywhere else. You got to play bigger breaks, so um, you can do a lot of that. They give you the opportunity with the practice facilities here, where the greens are at at or close to the speed of the golf course, where um, you know if you're practicing correctly, you can really get dialed. But it still requires a level of trust out there that um, is unusual in other places and. Um, other than that, I think, you know, I, I think each year you gain a little bit of experience. You have different shots that, you know, you're like, oh, wow, okay, that was a better way to play that hole. Or, you know, man, I haven't been here before. I don't want to go here again. Um, and it, so when you start, you know, picking your strategy for Thursday and you start seeing the hole locations, um, I think year over year it, it obviously helps quite a bit. Now in, in 15, I, I'd come in, I'd finished second and then lost in a playoff. So... I believe I could have been playing anywhere and, and would have been able to win by four. It, I think, um, you know, I didn't know as much as I do now, which is more of an advantage now um, than I had then, but I was obviously um, playing, you know, as one of the best in the world at the time. Michael? Jordan, thank you. Uh, Jordan, uh, uh, just a broad question about the role of the rules in the game. Since the pandemic, there's lots of new people in the game and they're trying to figure out the rules and they're watching on TV and they see a ball going to a hazard and they see the official out there and he's got his walkie talkie and he's pointing. It's all very confusing to them. Could you maybe offer a broad statement to people who are new to the game, why these finicky rules, but the rules in general are just such an important starting point to this game that you play? Well, I think because the the playing field is different for everyone every day, wherever we go. We don't play on the same court. We don't play on the same length field. Um, so in general, there's going to be different situations that come up that you've got to have ways to, to figure out. I think the easiest way to, to do it is if a drop, if the drop requires a penalty shot, you can, you can, um, you know, you, you teach them, you teach them red hazard, yellow hazard, um, and then free drops. And from there, you know, the rest of it, is somewhat easier than maybe it looks sometimes for us at the professional level when we've got some grandstand drops and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I think in general, uh, you're supposed to play the ball as it lies. And if you can't, you have to figure out where you're allowed to then go. And um, it's a, you know, you have five options here, three options there, or um, if you're standing on a path or your ball's on the path, just go ahead and move it over a little bit, you know. Um, we have to do it very, very legitimately because it's a, professional sport but I, if I was playing with my friends I wouldn't make them put the tees down and drop it from their knee for a cart path drop just you know put it where you can hit it and then keep it moving I don't know I don't know if that helps at all I'm sorry you, you can follow Wait, up you, I you wouldn't mind if you just, just if you could broaden it out a little bit like our faith in your scores you say you shot 71 we believe it well, I tried That's to get away with one lower earlier this year so I might not be the first one <laughs> <to ask. laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a game of, it's a game of integrity. Um, you know, you keep track. That's why, honestly, I think handicaps are just such a great thing because no one's really inclined to, you know, you want to lower it, but at the same time, the more shots you get, the better it is at the tournaments that you're playing in. So, um, the system of being able to even out golf and allow someone that's 
you know, 70 to play with someone that's 30 at different skill levels and still have a good match is something that can't be done in other sports. So I'm not, that's a different answer than the rules answer essentially, but it's a beautiful game. It can be played by anyone at any level. Um, but you know, you gotta, you gotta do it honestly. Howard. You mentioned the unique elements of August and obviously one of them is the absence of cell phones. What impact does that have on you as a player with the gallery? without cell phones in everyone's hand. It's amazing. Um, but I also understand how advantageous cell phones are for the growth of our sport. So um, it's nice for a week, but if it was every tournament, um, you know, it, we'd, our growth would be limited. Um, but what's really cool about it is you just feel that everyone's very, very present. Um, you know, they're not focused on if they got the right shot that they're sending, and maybe they, didn't, they don't even know where your ball went, right? And here, uh, the crowd, the patrons are um, just like at the Open Championship. They're just they're highly educated. They're very involved. They're very present, and so um, it it you end up having those kind of roars and stuff that may be similar, but might not be. You know, with the phones out, I don't. I mean, just um, you know, at the, at, I think as a, from a player in the ropes, which is the way you asked me the question, it's very nice because you feel like everyone's there with you all the time. Mary Kate. Hey Jordan, um, just curious, can you describe the feeling you get when you return to the property and get to put on your green jacket? I, I, um, it's very cool. Uh, you know, I think back to each time when I see it, I, or I think back to what it was like when I first got it. Um, and you know, that obviously brings, brings about great memories, but I think about the time since then too, where, you know, the dinners and, being able to come back on other trips and bring, um, you know, family members, friends, uh, and and have a great time and wear the jacket and just be very proud that for me what it represents is it's the trophy here. So um, it makes me very proud because it was the tournament that I was a dream to win growing up and and it you know it happened. So um, it's just a it's a it's a it's a cool feeling. But I don't get um, I drove Magnolia yesterday afternoon and. It's just a beautiful drive, but I'm, I didn't like video it like I did the first couple years and stuff like that. Um, probably still should, but uh, yeah, it's, but the second you get, the second you're out there and you play your first hole, like yesterday I got to 10 green and I'm like, man, this is just not like anything else. And um, so it, it, it catches me at different times maybe than it used to, but it always still gets you. Kyle. Yeah, Jordan, um, this is a, a week and a place that's probably been normalized for you over the last 10 years, but I'm curious about what you experience it so differently than we do. What are the things, what are the nuances, the nooks and crannies that um, just stand out and are meaningful? What, sorry, of what, of what a player experiences? Yeah, of a player experience of Augusta National and the Masters. I think about all the, sh like getting to hit the shots. Like, um, uh, I I think um, just the pure golf of it, the being able to practice and you can only have one person with you on, on the facilities and nobody, only your caddy with you on the course. You can only have one extra person on the facilities. Um, so that experience, it's, it's kind of, it's quiet, it's peaceful, even though, you know, there's a crowd behind, um, it, it's different. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I kind of like I don't spend a ton of time in the clubhouse or anything like that. Uh, it's yeah, I do the same things that I do on a normal week. I don't go do anything else. So I guess my answer could be what it is most every week. But here specifically, it's you know having having fun hitting the shots on the course, playing around with the crowd. You can hit some cooler shots here, play some slopes that that you like you, you don't you don't try to be an entertainer as much in your practice rounds at other tournaments and you like it's fun to be an entertainer here in a practice round and um i think maybe that's that's kind of the biggest difference here david jordan uh in bahamas you shared with us uh that you discovered that you'd had a wrist problem and there was going to be some period of how you were going to manage it how much it might affect your golf swing. You've found it affected it a little bit. And I'm wondering what uh, since then have you done or had to do to 
keep it from reoccurring? Has it re have you had any problems with it since? Uh, constant TLC. Um, I had a, I had it reoccur in January after Hawaii, and I had it Monday of the players, and then Monday of last week. And when it happens, I'm, I can't do anything that day. So as long as it doesn't happen um, during uh, the, typically as the week goes on, it gets better and better. I'm using it more and more. I'm recovering more and more than say my days off at home. Um, I'm getting treatment daily here, uh, and that's included with everything else that I didn't used to do. Um, so it's a it's an ECU tendon um, issue that uh, that unfortunately I've I've not fixed. But um, when it flares up, it flares up for like 24 hours, and then it just slowly gets better. Versus last May when I couldn't play the Byron and then in October it was another week and a half or so and since then since I've gotten more on top of it by December um, I at least know what it is and how to get it quickly better but um, yeah it's something that I don't think there's really anything I can do other than rest and I'm not resting it anytime soon so I'll I'll probably take quite a bit of time when the season's over and see if it kind of sets it back in place and doesn't flare up as much. Jamie. Hey, Jordan, thanks. Um, last year were the fewest three putts ever collectively at the Masters. I'm just wondering, is there any sense that the greens possibly might be getting a little less fearsome? Uh, and if so, any reasons you'd see for that? Uh, do you know what, like, the previous three or five years? Is there a trend or is it just it's, it's, a, it's trending down the last it's, it's, six or seven years, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe um, guys are just learning more and more and, and do it because they don't seem any less scary mm -hmm. um, if that's what you're asking there. I think that um, I remember, I mean, it was really firm in 14, 16, 17, 18, and then we've had some softer years, like these fronts that come in, like what's expected Thursday. And like if uh, there's some holes out there right now that if you gave it two more days of sunshine, it'd be, you that stat would not hold up. Um, but I think it's been, I'd have to, you'd have to look at the weather. 16 was the hardest year of all. Yeah, so that, that, yeah, that it was. Hard, that hard firmness. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, I think it truly just has to do with the the firmness or softness of the greens because it affects how much that grass that that friction's there, and it makes it to where you know putts that would you'd go six seven feet by stay at three or four feet and end up from a you know 60 percenter to 95 percenter and over the course of however many guys four days it's. I think I think it's weather dependent personally because I don't think that the slopes have softened or anything seems less scary. But um, I want to say early in 2021 20, or two, early on before the front, they were really scary that Thursday or Friday. I mean, I remember them being pretty wicked. Number nine was super firm and tough, and then you know it rained and you came out and it was almost like a different color, the green. So and they just become a little bit easier to manage when that happens. Last question, Douglas. Uh, Jordan, you talked last year after the Masters that you only had a specific target on 50% of your shots. Um, just talk about in your favorite event how that happened and how you kind of make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, I guess it could be a number. Of th I've had that happen, you know, a few times, I think, um, or a number of events. Sometimes you're just mentally fatigued. Here, that's not the case. Um, I think a lot of times I get very – like call it 14, for instance, everything's pitched very left to right. And I'm sitting here just like, okay, I'm just going to make sure I'm drawing something down the middle versus, you know, I want this to drop on the corner of the grandstands. It's going to start on that tree. And you get, there's so much pitch and slope and movement of the ball. Sometimes it's a little harder than I'm going to, I'm going to hit a straight one right at that tree. Um, it requires kind of a lot more feel to it. And sometimes that takes a little bit away from, it shouldn't. But I think I just get a little bit – could get lazy with targets sometimes if it's um, on some of those holes where you feel like you're just really trying to move it a lot. It's hard to be like, is, am I really going to turn it from that tree to there? Um, but that's, I, I think, the only thing I can think of. But my goal is to have a specific and very small target on each shot. It's the uh, easiest way to have your good ones go right where you want to and your misses be close. Jordan, thank you, and good luck this week. Thanks.